W-E-A-F, New York. Avalon cigarettes, please. Yes, sir. Oh, just a moment, sir. Don't forget your change. You'd never guess, but Avalon's cost you less. So why not always travel on with Good evening, friends. Good evening. This is Del King saying welcome to Avalon time with Red Foley, Jeanette, Edna Stilwell, the Avalon Chorus, Bob Strong and his orchestra, and Red Skelton. The orchestra opens the program with Romance Runs in the Family. <laughs> Avalon cigarettes give you a perfect combination of highest quality plus real money-saving economy. Two distinct advantages that put Avalons in a class by themselves. They're made from the very finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos, blended to perfection. And still, Avalons cost three to five cents less per pack than other popular price brands. Three to five cents less, mind you, for a cigarette that's unsurpassed in quality. Is it any wonder then, friends, that Avalons are known from coast to coast as the outstanding cigarette value on the market today? It'll pay you well to give Avalons a trial. Why not get a pack tonight? You'd never guess they cost you less. effervescent comedian and the only man who thinks he could be a great swimming instructor because in vaudeville he played all the dives in tank town <laughs> red skelton thank you and good evening ladies and gentlemen i feel great tonight say del uh, speaking of swimming you should have been down at the beach this afternoon oh there's a lot of excitement down excitement there. well what happened a lifeguard got in the water over his head <laughs> boy what lifeguards they have down at the beach if you're drowning they throw you a rope <laughs> both ends <laughs> There's a big crowd down at the beach today. In fact, it's the biggest crowd I've seen since my relatives went home. <laughs> mm. Don't get me. With so many people in the water, I dove in three times and didn't get wet once. <laughs> oh, but you should see those new bathing suits the girls are wearing this year. Miss Stilwell walked out in one of those new bathing suits and got a letter of protest from Minsky. <laughs> Jeanette was there. She swore she had on a bathing suit and had Einstein along to prove it. <laughs> oh, you'd have to see the bathing suit to believe me. And believe me, you should see it. <laughs> the, uh, the bathing suit I wore was a sarong. You know what a sarong is? That's a pair of three-cornered pants that's going Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I saw some girls coming and I struck an athletic pass out. The, uh... <laughs> I never realized that it was a good gag, too. <laughs> I never realized how puny I was until a shark swam up and uh, took one look at me and says, I ain't that hungry and swam away. <laughs> No kidding, that shark felt so sorry for me. Five minutes later, he came back with tears in his eyes and handed me a sardine sandwich. <laughs> oh, you meet a lot of nice people down on the beach. I met a married lady who was so fat, she took a dive into the water and three foreign spies thought she was a battleship and took pictures of her. <laughs> you know, we'll get that one out. <laughs> 
stupid. And she came out of the water. We sat down on a sand pile together. And I said, would your husband get sore if he caught us? She says, I don't think so. <laughs> this is him we're sitting on. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I don't like about... <laughs> The only thing I don't like about the beach, you know, you have to be very careful of sunburns. I went to sleep, and when I woke up, I was so sunburned, they gave me an offer to work as master of ceremonies at a barbecue stand. <laughs> Again, I was so well cooked, a mosquito came over and stuck his beak in me, and I went... <laughs> well, <laughs> I think I've been out here taking nose dives long enough. So I'll wait out and let Red Foley dive in with On the Sunny Side of the Rockies. Come on in, fella. The water's fine. On the sunny side of the Rockies Where the desert kisses the sea I left my love near the rocky When we said goodbye tenderly Though mountains are high And we're far apart In my dreams I'm with my sweetheart on the sunny side of the rocky, where the desert kisses the sea. Mountains are high and we're far apart. In my dreams, I'm with my sweetheart on the sunny side of the rocky, where the desert kisses the sea. From Bing Crosby's latest picture, East Side of Heaven, Bob Strong and the orchestra play the old Groner's hit tune, Hang Your Heart on a Hickory Limb.
a swell number played with a band. You know, I wish I'd have been an August leader, Dell. Well, why, Red? You know, you're better off this uh, way because as you grow older, you can do character parts. Yeah. Now, after all, what can Bob do with that stick when he grows older? Well, he can always stick a nail in the end of it and pick up paper. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Red, you ought to be proud of yourself, though. Why, you know, from coast to coast, people are learning to know and to love Red Skelton. They are? Uh-huh. Gee, maybe that's why hundreds of people are asking for my autograph. Huh? They don't want your autograph. They want to see if you can write. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Dell? I didn't say anything. That was Roger, the new fiddle player in the band. Oh, it was, huh? Mm -hmm. Say, Roger... You can't be on this program. No? Why not? Well, from now on, nobody can be on this show unless they can pass an intelligence test. Oh, gee, Skelton. Just when we were getting used to you, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, listen. You, you got to get off the show. Yeah. Mm. I'm as smart as the next guy, Skelton. Well, the next guy must be an awful dope. <laughs> hey, Red. Oh, what do you want? My sister thinks you're the greatest comic on the air. Oh, uh, she does? <laughs> Say, I'd like to meet her. I think we can arrange it. Yeah? Tuesday is visiting day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hit that guy in the nose. Oh, Red, listen, wait a minute. Calm down. Forget about him. <laughs> By the way, uh, listen, have you seen the new radio sets? The ones, you know, where you get the station by pushing buttons? Yeah, I saw one down at the White House when I was there at the President's Ball this spring. Well, how'd you like them? Oh, swell. You, I pressed one button, got Jack Benny. Yeah. Pressed another button, got Walter Winchell. Yeah. Pressed the third button. And what happened? <laughs> Opened a new bridge at Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> oh, Red. Hi, uh, Bob Strong. A happy cadenza to you. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I'm throwing a party for the cast tonight. Could you loan me three dollars? I'm sorry, I'm a little deaf in that air. Go around with the other. One. <laughs> I say, could you lend me ten dollars? What? Can you lend me ten dollars? You better go back to the three dollar air. <laughs> <laughs> no fooling, Bob. Will you let me have ten dollars? I'm sorry, I can't do it. And excuse me, I've got to talk to my boys. Oh, he can't do it. Why that guy's got the first dollar he ever made? Why do you mean that Bob is tight? Tight. He lives on soup and mashed potatoes to keep wearing out the filling in his teeth. Why, I always thought Bob was generous. Oh, you did, huh? Yeah. Well, did you know that last week he moved next door to a church? Next to a church? Yeah. Well, how come? Well, you know, the month of June, a lot of weddings, and that guy's nuts about rice pudding. <laughs> Oh, no kidding, Red. Come clean now. Are you really broke? Broke? Yeah. <laughs> See, I can't even remember the color of money. <laughs> Hello, Dell. Hi, Edna. Hello, Red. Hi, Edna. What's going on out here? Uh, well, uh, Red's broke. Hey, Dell. Oh, gee. Why'd you have to go tell her I was broke? Dell, has he been telling you he was broke? That's right. Well, how could anything get out of his wallet? He keeps a police dog in there. <laughs> I do not. Here's my wallet. Look, see if there's a police dog. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Put a muzzle on that guy. <laughs> okay, just for that, Miss Stillwell, you don't get that raise, I promise you. <laughs> what are you laughing at? What did you say? I said, you don't get the raise, I promise you. Well, there goes nothing. <laughs> Oh, uh, Edna, that's no way to talk to me. The guy that loves you. Loves me? Ha. <laughs> Edna, your eyes are like violets, and your lips are like rose petals. Boy, what a flowery line you've got. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you have to go get me out of the mood now. Say, Edna, I'm giving a little party tonight after the show. You're invited. Uh-oh, uh hold everything. Here comes one key strong. <clears throat> <laughs> Hello, Edna, darling. Hello, Bob Precious. What goes on here? Edna, I'm mad about you. Will you call me Bobby? Will you call me Toodle? Will you call me when this is over? <laughs> you never believe it. We get paid for this. <laughs> is that the telephone? Well, it's too early for jingle bells. <laughs> Hello? Yes? Oh, you'd like to have the orchestra play my old Kentucky home? Well, hold the phone. Hey, Bob, play hold tight. Okay, here we go, boys. One, two. Hey, what's the 
I thought they asked for me old Kentucky home. That was the telephone operator. I just wanted to give her the wrong number and see how she likes it. <laughs> Hiya, boys. Hiya. Well, oh, hello, Edna. Well, if it ain't gone with the wind foley. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Big timey. I'm in the money now. You got dough? You're just the sucker. Uh, just the guy I want to <laughs> see. Hey, wait, you want to see me? That's right. Could I borrow $20 from you, Red? Oh, it's a pleasure. Well, if it's a pleasure, make it 40 <laughs> Okay, here. Here's five. Mm. And uh, 10. Uh, 15. 20. And 20 is 40. Here's $2. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I asked for 40. I know you did. You asked for 40. You'd take 20, and I knew you'd be tickled with 10, so I gave you two. <laughs> well, I got to go now. So long, boys. So long, pumpkin. So long, Redsy boy. Redsy boy? Redsy boy? What could be worse? Punk. I love punk. Punk? <laughs> now, listen, I've had about enough of this. I'm going to look in my little vest pocket dictionary and see what punk means. If it's what I think it is, I'll beat you to a pulp. <laughs> punk. P-U. P-U. That's it. <laughs> But now, look, folks, I got to run down to the bank and borrow some money. Must you go? Yes, because right after Jeanette sings, don't worry about me, I want all of you to meet me for a bite of supper. Hooray! Now, now, don't get excited. Now, of course, I have a little trouble with my banker getting money out of him, so if I'm a little late, don't worry about me. (laughs) Sing it, Jeanette. Don't worry about me, I'll get along. Forget about me, be happy, my love. Let's say that our little show is over, and so the story ends. Why not call it a day, the sensible way, and still be friends? Darling, why should you cling to some fading thing that you see? If you can forget, don't worry about me. Why should you cling to some fading thing that used to be? If you can forget, don't worry about me. Ladies and gentlemen, millions of smokers will tell you Avalon's give greater cigarette value than have ever been known before. They're positively highest quality through and through, made with the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos. And still, they cost three to five cents less per pack than other popular price brands. Never has a price so low bought this unexcelled Avalon quality. And you'd never guess that they cost you less. And now here's a special word to the ladies. You'll like Avalon's smoother, milder taste and flavor and the way they're tightly packed so that the tobacco doesn't fall out into your purse. You'll like Avalon's smart, modern package, too. And remember, Avalon save you money to buy those extra things for yourself and your home. So, friends, Avalon's, the cigarette that gives you so much and costs so little, deserves a trial by every smoker, both men and women. So why not pick up a pack tonight? Well, now as we join Red Skelton and the gang, they're walking down the street trying to find a restaurant. 
Did you go to the bank, Red? Yeah, I went. What happened? Well, I wanted to borrow $500. My banker wanted to loan me $2. So? I insisted on $500. He insisted on $2. I said, $500? He said, two. Well, how did he end up? I took the $2. I was no mood to dicker. <laughs> Here's a nice-looking place, Red. Yeah, it's not bad. What's that sign say? The elbow. Ah, just a joint. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they even print their motto on the window. Yeah, what does it say? It says, if our stakes are too tough for you, stay out. This is no place for weaklings. <laughs> now, come on, let's go in. Take a stab at it. <laughs> Oh, say, wait. Oh, here, here's a table big enough for us over here, Red. Yeah, come on, everybody sit down now. Oh, Make I'm yourself down. at home. Where's the waiter? Sorry, sit. Hey, are you a waiter standing over there? Well, I ain't a penny gum machine. <laughs> Thank you, Lise. What are you doing in this restaurant? What am I doing here? Why, I own the darn thing. <laughs> yes, sir, I do. Down to the very last little old bean. <laughs> Say, Herky, I'm throwing a party for the gang, but we gotta have a lot of service now. Well, there's just me and my waitress, Daisy, but yeah. uh, I can work twice as fast as any other waiter. You can? How come, oh, Herky? Well, you see, I belong to two unions. Oh. <laughs> well, look, bring us some menus, will you? An order of rice pudding, please. <laughs> well, here's the menus. Uh, orders, please, Miss Stillwell. I'll have some hash. The lady wants to take a chance. <laughs> Uh, I'll have some hash, too. Yes, sir. Another sport! <laughs> An order of rice pudding, please. <laughs> well, what do you have, uh, Mr. Skelton? Oh, uh, let's see. I'm hungry enough to eat a, a house. Porter house. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> that's what I'll have. Make it a steak. Say, what kind of cake is that? Oh, that's stolen. Huh? Stolen. I don't care how you got it. What is it? <laughs> that's coffee cake. Oh, and uh, now you, Mr. Foley. Well, I'll have a dozen clams, some dill pickles, five soft-boiled eggs, and six steaks. Some Boston cream pie, a large cucumber, three scoops of ice cream, and a quart of coffee. What? No hors No, no. <laughs> well, okay. Would you mind signing this order, please? Sign it what for? Well, do you think I want the coroner to slap me in the can? <laughs> Look, uh, with my steak, I'll have a baked potato, Herky. A potato, all right. Mrs. Murphy in the seal skin coat. <laughs> uh, for dessert, I'll have a piece of berry pie with lots of powdered sugar. A hunk of indigestion in a snow star. <laughs> Listen, I want an order of rice pudding, please. <laughs> I don't know. They should have cooked this steak in soap. I need something to rinse it down. <laughs> Wash it down, rather. <laughs> Say, uh, Herky, come here. I ordered a steak well done. <laughs> they even messed up my ad lib. <laughs> I ordered a steak well done. This thing's too rare. Why, that's entirely too silly, Mr. Skelton. That steak is cooked. Cooked? I've seen cows hurt worse than this and get well. <laughs> Hey, Red, well, where's the gravy? Uh, it's on Del King's bed. Well, then pass Del. Yeah. <laughs> Please bring me some rice pudding. Well, somebody had served that guy over there. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Oh, uh, uh, hey, Bob Strong, you're a little late. Yeah, I made a mistake. I went into one of those restaurants where they name dishes after people. You think they'll ever name something after me? Oh, they may. <laughs> but who wants to eat dog food? <laughs> <laughs> Daisy, take the gentleman's art. Yes, sir. Uh-oh. Hey, Edna, look at your boyfriend eyeing the waitress. Your order, sir. Mmm. Say, girl, it's a nice day, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is, and so was yesterday, and my name's Daisy, and I know I'm a pretty girl, and I have blue eyes, and I've been here quite a while, and I like the place, and I don't think I'm too nice a girl to be working here. My wages are satisfactory, and I don't think there's a show or dance in town tonight, and if there was, I wouldn't go with you. I'm from the country, and I'm a respectable girl. My brother's a cook in the kitchen and played football in college and weighs 300 pounds. Last week, he nearly broke the neck of a fresh a guy that tried to date me. Now, what do you have? Chicken, steak, or fried liver? <laughs> I'll have two fried eggs. <laughs> Listen, please, just one little order of rice pudding. <laughs> I wish they'd take care of that guy. 
I give up. This steak's too tough for me. You mean that piece of perfect beef is too tough? That's right. My $2 steak is tough? Yeah. That's a piece of blue ribbon meat. You must have won the blue ribbon at Hialeah. <laughs> here are your eggs, Mr. Strong. Say, they got here awfully fast. I know we have to make things fast. This is only a half hour program. <laughs> We get more fun out of this than the audience. <laughs> hey, girlie, this egg's terrible. Well, don't blame me. I only laid the table. <laughs> hey, listen. Please bring me some rice pudding, please. <laughs> oh, I'm awfully sorry, old pal. I, I didn't hear you. The guy wants an order of rice pudding. Uh... Did you say something important to me, Mr. Skelton? Look, for the last time, I told you to bring that guy some rice pudding and get it over with. Say, now, here, you look here. Are you trying to tell my customers what to eat? <laughs> the Avalon Forest joins our own Red Foley in one of the most beautiful tunes of recent years, Little Skipper. Ship ahoy, my little skipper, it's time to sail for Blanket Bay. Climb aboard your baby clipper, but don't you sail to far. The foot of your bed is your faithful little crew. It's your own puppy dog keeping watch the whole night through. Sail away, my little skipper. Good night and Pleasant dreams to you. Remember, friends, when you can get supreme quality in Avalon's for less, why pay more? Next time, ask for Avalon. And don't forget your change. Yes, Avalon cigarettes, dear friends, cost several cents less than others. You too can save this difference like all of us Avalon brothers. Each pack is wrapped in cellophane, each pack is union made. No wonder folks from coast to coast say Avalon leads the parade. So why not always travel on with us? Yes, you'd never guess, but Avalon's cost only 10 cents plus city or state tax. Well, Dell, that just about winds up everything for tonight. Yes, Red, it's one for the books. You mean one from the books? Yeah. <laughs> now, listen, Rogers, don't you come back here next week. You go someplace else. 
Remember, this program's my bread. Yeah, and all your jokes is crummy. <laughs> oh, what's the use? Good night, ladies and gentlemen. This is Red Skelton thanking you for the use of your loudspeaker. Good night. Be with us next Saturday night at the same time when the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation will again present Avalon Time. <laughs> Del King speaking. Good night, everybody. <laughs> on this program was Don't Worry About Me from World Fair Cotton Club to Lynch. Avalon Time was heard from the Chicago studios of the National Broadcasting Company. W-E-A-F, New York, 9 p.m., B-U-L-O-V-A, Boulevard Watch Time.